Recently, I had a debate with a friend about whether dogs bark with a different accent depending on where they're from. Does a French dog woof with more sophistication than a British dog? Is an American bark nasal? Is an Italian bark flamboyant? We didn't come to any great conclusion, but it got me thinking about accents and the different sounds that exist in some languages, but not in others. As a native English speaker with no second language, there are sounds from other languages that my ears and brain aren't able to detect. I've been told, for example, that there are a number of variations of a J sound in some South Asian languages that a Westerner like myself just can't hear. But surely at some point I could have learned to hear the difference. What if I'd been born in Nepal instead of England? Well, actually, saying maybe I could have learned to hear the difference is a bit misleading. As babies, we can instinctively hear way more than what we can once we've been integrated into a society. We learn not to hear the difference. The same weird irony that means a baby who can instinctively swim then has to have weekly swimming lessons at school to relearn this natural behaviour. So why is any of this important? Well, it doesn't take long for a baby to start honing its hearing abilities to the society that it's born into. And this not only tells us about the neurological development of the senses, it also tells us how quickly babies adapt to fit into their society. By five days old, Natsi et al demonstrate that a baby already recognises the difference between rhythmic and non-rhythmic sentences in various languages. An infant not even a week old can spot the difference between English and Japanese, for example, before they even understand the concepts of words and sentences. And this early linguistic development is mirrored in the baby's own non-verbal babblings as they develop through the first year. Boyce and Bardis et al played French adults recordings of eight-month-old babies babbling away. Even without seeing the baby or being given any information beyond hearing the recording, the adults were able to correctly identify a French eight-month-old from a baby of another linguistic background. Before they've even verbalised their first word, a baby has developed an accent determined by the language that they're exposed to in the early weeks and months of life. And it's this super early specialisation in our language-centric listening skills that results in common language learning difficulties as we grow up. In Japanese, for example, there's a sound that's something of a mashup between L and R, L and R, but there's no distinct sound for either individually. So to a native Japanese speaker, light and right sound like the same word all because of how their parents spoke in their first year of life. So is there any benefit or reason to this geolinguistic quirk? Well, Stager and Verka think there is. They say that our learned inability to distinguish between sounds that aren't used in our native language represents a reorganisation in the infant's language processing capacity and demonstrates an infant's development from prioritising the learning of syllables to a new priority of learning words. From a social perspective, the benefit is surely obvious. A baby will do whatever it can to fit in with the society it finds itself born into, not just for the benefits of a flourishing social life down the line, but for pure, instinctive survival. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please hit that thumbs up button to let other people know about the video. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to Psychology Unlocked and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. I'll see you next time.